Okay, so I just introduced you to vasopressin and the mechanism by which it works. Now what I'd like to do is take some time to apply what you've just learned to different scenarios in the kidneys and also talk about how uh, vasopressin secretion is regulated. Okay, so starting with this figure here, which you've already seen, I want to remind you that our urine is going to end up with different osmolarities depending on how much water gets reabsorbed in the collecting duct and the distal tubule, okay? So let's consider um, these questions. Also, water reabsorption, remember, is regulated by vasopressin. So let's think about these questions, okay? So would you wanna increase or decrease vasopressin secretion to get concentrated urine? and to get dilute urine. Okay, so think about that for a little bit. Hit pause, um, unpause when you are ready. Okay, so hopefully you figured out that for concentrated urine, you're going to want to increase your vasopressin secretion. For dilute urine, you're going to want to decrease vasopressin secretion. That is illustrated in this figure here. Okay, so uh, if we have vasopressin present, remember that that is going to allow, that's going to um, insert those water pores into the walls of the collecting duct. That's going to allow water to leave the tubule and be reabsorbed back into the body. As a result of that, our urine is going to get more and more concentrated as it goes down the collecting duct. Um, I do want to point out this that we have sort of the same situation that we had um, in the descending limb of the loop of Henle, where we get more concentrated because we are equilibrating with um, the interstitial space here. Okay, so we're losing water and then we end up with uh, our urine at a high osmolarity at the end. Okay, if vasopressin is absent, we get our dilute urine. So I want to start by reminding you that um, as we enter the distal tubule, um, our urine or our filtrate has a low osmolarity. It's 100 milliosmolar, okay? Without vasopressin, we're not going to have those water pores in the walls of our collecting duct. Um, and as a result, water is not going to be reabsorbed into the body. Um, so the filtrate is going to retain that same osmolarity all the way down as it moves down the collecting duct. Okay. All right, so we just talked about the effects of vasopressin. Now let's talk about when vasopressin is secreted. Okay, so we have three main stimuli for vasopressin secretion. We've got blood pressure, plasma volume, and plasma osmolarity. So I would like you to take a moment now to consider this question here. Would an increase or a decrease in each of these variables lead to vasopressin secretion? So hit pause, think about that, and we will come back to it. Okay, so let's look at the answers. Okay, so looking at blood pressure, it's going to be decrease, a decrease in blood pressure that's going to stimulate vasopressin secretion, right? So remember that vasopressin secretion is going to allow you to reabsorb water. If you have decreased blood pressure, you don't want to lose more water to the environment. You want to keep that water in your body to keep your blood pressure from getting even lower. So that's why decreased blood pressure is a stimulus for vasopressin secretion. Um, you might remember that blood pressure is sensed by baroreceptors in our carotid artery and our aorta. Um, those baroreceptors are going to send signals via a sensory neuron to the hypothalamus. And then I want to remind you, the hypothalamus is where vasopressin is being synthesized. So, um, so yeah, that's it. 
uh, we're going to synthesize vasopressin in the hypothalamus. Okay, let's look at our next variable. Okay, so I want to point out, so blood volume, um, it's going to be a low blood volume that is going to stimulate vasopressin secretion. So kind of the same reasoning as before. Remember, vasopressin secretion is going to stimulate water reabsorption. If we have a low blood volume, we don't want to be losing more fluid, more water to the outside environment. We want to keep that water in our bodies. So we are going to uh, secrete vasopressin and we're going to reabsorb water, okay? Um, low blood volume or blood volume is sensed by receptors that we have in our atria, in the atria of our um, hearts, okay? Um, those receptors are going to send a signal via, the, via a sensory neuron to the hypothalamus, which then is going to secrete vasopressin, okay? Last stimulus um, is osmolarity. So it's going to be a high osmolarity that is going to stimulate vasopressin secretion. Um, if we have a high osmolarity, we don't want to lose more water to the external environment because that would make the, the, the problem worse, right? So we, that would make our osmolarity even higher. Um, so we don't want to do that. Um, we sense osmolarity in the hypothalamus um, via these osmoreceptors, which are stretch receptors, okay? Um, those osmoreceptors are going to send a signal through these neurons uh, very close by to another part of the hypothalamus where the vasopressin will be synthesized, okay? Um, I do want to point out that it's osmolarity that is the main stimulator of vasopressin secretion, okay? And then one last thing I want to say before we close, which is that um, vasopressin can help you retain water that's already in your body. So basically it's going to keep you from losing excess water, but that only does so much to help bring you back to homeostasis, right? So for example, if you have decreased blood pressure and you hold on to all of the water that's in your body, uh, you reabsorb all that water, um, your blood pressure is still gonna be low, like if you have low blood pressure, right? Um, in order to bring blood pressure back up, you're actually going to need to bring new water into your body from an outside source. So essentially, basically, you're, you're gonna need to drink water, okay? Um, same with blood volume, same with osmolarity. So um, basically, vasopressin can help you hold on to water that's already in your body but in order to, like, if that's not enough, you're going to need more water from somewhere else, okay?